NASA has some incredible plans for the moon. For example, their next ambitious lunar program, Artemis II. They've set their sights on landing astronauts, including the first woman and the next man, on the moon by 2024. Artemis is all about building a sustainable presence on the moon. They're planning to establish a lunar gateway, a sort of space station in lunar orbit, which will serve as a jumping off point for lunar landings. And let's not forget about the cool lunar landers. Scientists are developing the mighty Space Launch System rocket, which will launch the Orion spacecraft carrying astronauts towards the moon. Then there's the Human Landing System, a snazzy lunar lander that will gently touch down on the moon's surface, allowing astronauts to explore and conduct amazing scientific experiments. And NASA isn't going alone this time. They're teaming up with international partners, like the European Space Agency, to make this lunar dream a reality. But all these wonderful dreams might be ruined by something that seems super small and insignificant at first. Picture this, no atmosphere, no air to breathe, and suddenly, a mysterious haze and radiant beams of light appear at sunrise and sunset. It's as if the moon is putting on a celestial show. But there is a twist to this beauty. During the Apollo 17 mission in 1972, this beautiful sight made one of the NASA astronauts, Harrison Schmidt, sneeze and made his <laughs> eyes water. He called it lunar hay fever. This mysterious fever affected all 12 moonwalkers. From sneezing fits to stuffy noses, those astronauts experienced symptoms as if they caught a cold. It took days for the reactions to fade away. This event led to a discovery about lunar dust and its darker side. When scientists found out about these rays, they rolled up their sleeves and delved into their origins. And here's what they discovered. Those radiant bands of light were actually caused by sunlight sneaking through layers of teeny tiny lunar dust. The dust was composed of small particles and sharp glass shards and was lurking everywhere. And it turned out that this lunar dust was a sneaky villain. It brought a whole host of problems. Astronauts who found themselves with impaired vision were just the beginning. The troublemaker went even further, damaging precious machinery and causing electronic malfunctions. It even had the audacity to corrode components and smelled like burnt gunpowder inside the spacecraft. Yikes. It clings to everything, coating surfaces like a mischievous blanket. It can clog up equipment, get into delicate machinery, and even mess with astronauts' spacesuits. In 1972, things got really hairy again. The Apollo 17 astronauts faced a nightmare. After just 22 hours of gallivanting on the lunar surface, their spacesuits suffered irreparable damage. Yes, you heard that right. Irreparable. The dust diminished astronauts' mobility, making it harder for them to move around and perform their moonwalks with grace. And no matter how hard they tried to clean it off, it clung on for dear life, leaving the spacesuits in a sorry state. So, as you can see, it poses some serious challenges for future moon missions. But our intrepid scientists aren't giving up. To solve this problem, they have to understand how lunar dust forms and why it's so darn clingy. They found out that it all begins with meteorite impacts. When these space rocks crash into the moon, they generate a fine dust that fills the air. Sometimes these impacts even cause minerals to melt, forming sharp glass shards that mix with the dust. Talk about a moon makeover. The dust is also filled with silicate, a material commonly found on volcanic planets. Silicate inhalation can cause serious lung problems for Earth's miners, so you can imagine the trouble it can cause on the moon. A recent study found that even a scoop of replica moon dust was toxic enough to destroy up to 90% of lung and brain cells exposed to it. But it gets worse. The low gravity on the moon allows those tiny particles to float around for much longer, penetrating deeper into the lungs. Imagine breathing particles 50 times smaller than a human hair for months. That's a recipe for trouble. And you see, on the moon's surface, things are a bit different than here. There are no rainstorms or strong gusts of wind to blow this dust away. There is also no atmosphere to protect the surface. So without the natural forces of wind and water erosion like we have on Earth, these dry particles stick around persistently. And to make matters more electrifying, the moon is constantly showered by radiation from the sun. This exposure gives the dust an electric charge. The solar winds create positively and negatively charged particles. The particles then buzz around, repelling each other and giving rise to those radiant bands of light that the Apollo 8 astronauts witnessed. It's like a disco party on the moon. ESA, 
the European Space Agency, has gathered a team of experts to study the lunar dust. They're working with simulated moon dust mined from a volcanic region in Germany to understand its behavior and effects. Engineers also need to find a way to protect future astronauts and equipment. Engineers in NASA want to create spacesuits that can survive not one, not ten, but a whopping 100 extravehicular activities on the lunar surface. That's like spending 800 hours out there, exploring and having a blast. Besides that, NASA initiated the Breakthrough Innovative and Game-Changing Idea Challenge in 2021. It was open to clever university students from all over the world. These young minds put their thinking caps on and unleashed a wave of innovative solutions. For example, they proposed using special fibers that conduct electricity, inspired by fluffy chinchilla hair. Just like how chinchillas stay dust-free, these fibers would help keep the lunar dust at bay. A furry friend lending a helping paw, isn't that adorable? Another bright idea involved an electrically charged brush activated by UV radiation. It's like a magical wand that zaps away the dust with a flick. Abracadabra, lunar dust be gone. And let's not forget the fabric inspired by clever insects. These insects have pollen-collecting structures that repel unwanted dust. So our ingenious students thought, why not mimic that? They designed a fabric with similar properties, creating a shield against the sneaky lunar particles. What's remarkable about these ideas is that they all use the power of charge to fight the dust. They cleverly repel it from the spacesuits, keeping them clean and protected. And even though all these ideas sound pretty great, scientists in NASA unleashed another, even better solution. Carbon nanotubes. It's a great way to revolutionize spacesuit fabric. What makes these carbon nanotubes so special? Well, they possess some amazing superpowers. First off, they're superconductive, meaning they can carry electricity like nobody's business. It's like having a lightning bolt trapped inside a microscopic tube. Not only that, but these carbon nanotubes are tougher than the toughest meteors. They have the strength to withstand the harsh lunar environment, where even a speck of dust can cause trouble. Imagine having a suit made of a material that's stronger than Superman's cape. So, NASA's scientists decided to weave these extraordinary carbon nanotubes into the spacesuit fabric. The electrodes were carefully integrated into the outer layer of the fabric, making it a force to be reckoned with. But how do they banish the lunar dust? Well, here comes electrifying science again. When activated by a special alternating current, the electrodes create powerful electric fields. These fields work like magnets, repelling both charged and uncharged dust particles away from the spacesuit. Picture this like a dance party, where the dust particles are the uninvited guests and the electric fields are the bouncers, swiftly escorting them out. Thanks to this technology, lunar dust doesn't stand a chance against our astronauts. Also on the bright side, the lunar soil can be used to make bricks for shelters. It can also help extract oxygen for astronauts to survive on the moon for long periods of time. When life gives you lemons, make a lemonade, right? So let's cheer on our NASA Dream Team as they embark on this epic lunar quest. Let's hope that they succeed in their findings and the next moon mission won't be a big problem. Stay tuned. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.